of the years, I had some agreements with the Siemens company. Dear Chairman, Philip Titus, ladies and gentlemen, first I'd like to thank you, Felix, for the kind invitation and to greet my mentor, Professor Langer, from the stage. Um, as this talk is embedded in several specific sessions referring to treatment and outcome of pulmonary atresia, I will pick up the chance to focus on methodical aspects of the making of pictures and processing of images in this current era of congenital cardiology. What you should expect from my talk is a focus on neonatal CT imaging and on CT imaging fusion on live fluoroscopy. The great, the great idea of fusion modalities is the expectation that fusion increases the value of combined images above the level of isolated modalities. A step back, there is no doubt that diagnostic modalities from the very beginning of congenital cardiology have prepared the ground of treatment. Imaging always have been a mainstay of diagnostics and everything started with the routine introduction of plain angiography and later on of echocardiography into the clinics. Since the early 80s, the diagnostic spectrum has been expanded more and more by the routine use of cardiac MRI, and since the 90s, the CT has become fast enough to scan the heart. We have heard about this. In the last years, cardiac imaging has evolved disproportionately high, especially in the echo, MRI, and CT disciplines. And it took 50 years of technical development to bring real-time 3D transesophageal echo routinely in the operation theater and in the cath lab. The strength of MRI clearly is scene angiography, volume and flow information, as well as tissue information. And the strength of the CT, as we have heard, is fa very fast, non-invasive acquisition of images with very high spatial resolution. And reduction of radiation dose those which in the newest scanner generation is equal or even lower compared to newest agiographic installations makes it CT attractive even for primary diagnostics in newborn. And in the same way, technical evolution improved imaging in the CAS lab. We now have brighter pictures with much less radiation exposure, which is one of basic fundament for the growing number and extension of our interventions. And I think as a consequence today, there is no more a clear gold standard or a one-stop imaging, but the choice of image modality much more belongs to the clinical questions as well as to the logical, technical, and logistical feasibilities at the hospital. And it's true, it's a basic demand that every image acquisition of any modality should be counterbalanced against patient stress and possible harm as radiation exposure and or need for sedation. And another aspect, the economic state demands to think about the costs of labor and technical investments. And we should not forget the expenses of post-processing complex images. So back to the pulmonary atresia, what do we need? To know from newborns with pulmonary atresia, we need detailed information of complete cardiac and vascular, intra and extra, cardiac anatomy and physiology, as well as every clinical information. Newborn pulmonary arteries are very vulnerable structures, and the first step of treatment should be well considered concerning the strategy and timing of treatment, palliation or first one-step correction, surgery or intervention. These are the questions. So this is our idea of an optimal imaging sequence in newborn with pulmonary atresia in the current era. If echo is adequate to visualize central pulmonary arteries and additional blood flow if applicable, we go straight ahead with our decision. In complex cases, we prefer to perform a CT scan, and the keywords associated with the CT are post-processing, multimodality image presentation, and if required, image fusion for intervention. To give you an idea of our background, in the last three years, we did 118 CT in neonates and infants. And with the very newest generations of CT scanners, which in our institution is the Siemens 4 CT, the effective dose in this group of patients has come down to a mean of 0.26 millisievert. You see the dose here compared to annually natural background exposition of about 0.1 millisievert, so it's indeed very, very low. And in a comparable time period, 
since we started rotational angiography in our Siemens Artist installation, we have used 3D image fusion and overlay on live fluoroscopy in about 30% of our interventions. This is a number of 322. The precondition for this is training of post-processing to make it quick and with reliable results in daily routine. This is just an example of a CT in a newborn with Esplenia syndrome, Miro image, dextrocardia, pulmonary atresia, supracardiac total anomalous pulmonary venous return, and atrioventricular septal defect. The two upper images in anterior view, this is an anterior view, demonstrates the preoperative cetus with dextrocardia, and after removing the rib cage, the anterior position of the aorta and the common pulmonary vein with connection to the innominoid um, vein. And then the VRT, the volume rendering uh, slab, on the lower right from anterior demonstrates the spatial relationship between aorta and the anomalous pulmonary veins return in the pulmonary branches. Altogether, and this is true for every image, CT imaging and 3D reconstruction display comprehensively all components of the complex heart disease. Preoccupation with the CT clearly broadens the cardiologist's mind. And from our experience, only expert post-processing exposures all information contained in the data sets. This is the work of a pediatric cardiologist. Interactive discussion, meaning turning and rotating roundly, cutting and exposure during the debate, further increase the extent of information compared to look on a fixed picture. At least 3D image, at last, 3D images require less spatial imagination, abilities compared to a simple 2D slice, and well, therefore, it's loved by our surgeons. Future perspectives of multimodality image presentation refer to presentation modalities. This is an example of a 3D air projection and live spatial definitions as presented by Dr. Bruckheimer from Israel, or 3D printouts which have become possible in the last years. And the rapid evolution of soft and hardware improves the usability of post-processing the storage and recall of processed data sets, which now have become far more valuable than the primary data set, and the availability whenever and wherever it is needed. Okay, the main topic of my talk is the CT image fusion and the CAS lab. What are the benefits of 3D image fusion on live fluoroscopy for intervention? The 3D model, you can see here on an additional fluoroscopy screen, forecasts the ideal projection angel. At any time, the model, this model follows CR movement and table movement, providing continuous awareness of the tissue structures on the screen. And the aim is to facilitate navigation, to increase security, and to save burden for the patient. For image fusion in the CAS lab, we need a 3D processed CT data set. This is this one, this is a CT, and the 3D reconstruction. In the CAS lab, the lower row, till late, we have to perform a rotational angiography, and this data set also needed post-processing. The two 3D data sets then could be fused and back-projected on live fluoroscopy. And this method also can be executed with every 3 data set, especially from MRI or the rotational angiography itself. There's a new software which now has become available, rotational angiography and creation of a 3D data set for image registration is no longer necessary. A simple plain angiogra uh, angiography is enough to register the prepared 3D CT data set and to project this one back on live fluoroscopy. And in the future, I am very sure this will re further reduce the need of diagnostic angiographies in the CAS lab. To give you an example, this is our latest patient from this week. A male preterm baby, 1,600 grams of weight with factal association. He received colostoma surgery at his second day of life. His congenital heart defect is pulmonary atresia with ventricular septal defect. At this point, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to make a short break and to put in an insertion which normally is not of any special importance but it refers to the current public dispute. This boy is the third child of a Pakistan family. 
refugees for religious reasons who live in Germany now since two years. And I'd like warmly to welcome and to support this family with great empathy in the pediatric cardiologist community. Thank you. This is the acute cardiography. You see backward rotation of the hypoplastic right ventricular outflow tract and the hypoplastic main pulmonary artery and a somewhat unclear relation to the VSD and the aorta. For optimal planning of treatment, at an age of five days, we performed a cardiac CT. And what you see here first are the standard sectional images and standard projections, lateral, frontal, <coughs> and the, uh, the orientation inside the thorax. And this gives clear 2D information of the spatial relationship and the orientation inside the thorax. Further impression is provided from the 3D reconstruction, and I will show you a short video clip how to get answers from a dynamic, interactive watching a 3D dataset during our heart conference. For 3D reconstructions, we have developed a standard preset, and what we immediately see is that the atretic valve here is covered by the large right atrial auricle. Yeah, this is a case here. Thus, we have no direct view on the right ventricular outflow tract. Cutting then the data set from the left posterior orientation nicely showed the hypoplastic RVOT and the connection to the ventricular septal defect. And you can rotate and you can cut forward and backward just to get an optimal view on the structures you are interested of. And this patient we considered suitable for high-frequency RVOT perforation, but the decision from our heart conference at this time was to proceed for ductus standing, and this is what we did then at day eight of life. This picture shows the setting in our CAS lab. The workstation for image fusion is localized in direct neighborhood to the service of the catheter handling. And I already showed you the post-processing of the patient CT, and the next step is to load this prepared CT data set on our workstation. In most of our cases, we use segmentation. We don't want to look on everything, but only on the structures. Uh, on the key structures, which may be helpful for the intervention. And this step, as you here see in a live recording, can already be done before catheterization starts. This, record, this recording is a real-time preparation, and it's in the experienced hands of my interventional cardiologist, Martin Glöckler. And to be honest, it may need a little bit more time if performed by a beginner. Meanwhile, in the CARES lab, we had to perform a rotation in angiography. In this 1,600 gram child, I did this with a hand injection of diluted contrast agent into the ascending aorta. And this is a five seconds, 200 degrees turn of the C arm, producing 150 pictures. And from this imaging alone, we got complete information about arch, duct, and pulmonary anatomy. However, Till late, the post-processing of the rotation angiography is necessary to register the 3D data set. What you see now on the screen is the 3D information from the rotation angiography itself, the quality of which in this case is very comparable to the CT data set. You see here, very comparable, little bit more moving artifacts compared to the CT, which is much faster in the acquisition. At this moment, this is still the most time-consuming time of the whole procedure. Now you see in, have seen in white, in red, the rotation angiography, and yellow colored um, is the CT. And first, both data sets are adjusted manually to put them together, and um, fine registration of the two data sets that can be done by the computer, simply by a mouse click. You will see this in a moment. Now that both data sets are put it together, and now you register these two data sets and they are fixed together to one. We administer our prepared segmentation, set the illumination, and then the product can be immediately be back projected on additional fluoroscopy screen. And this is simply a short cut together of part of the intervention from the fluoroscopy screen from the interventionalist's view. The 3D image provides additional orientation without the need of further angiographies during the procedure.
And this is just to show you the result in our patient. You see the stand which straightens the formerly curved arterial duct right in position between aorta and pulmonary artery. But unfortunately, this boy suffered severely from intracerebral hemorrhage. Of even more benefit is the CT image fusion if it visualizes a landing zoom like in this newborn with pulmonary atresia and intact ventricular septum. So you see a really tiny pulmonary artery. And the process was the same. CT shows this tiny pulmonary artery and then you segment the data set. The pink color is uh, applied for the segmentation of the key structure in the CT. And then this whole process is be done and back projected. And what you see now on the right is a cut together of the high frequency perforation on the fluoroscopy screen. And we did nearly all of those imaging without breath hold or without further manipulations like rapid pacing. And we are completely satisfied from the result concerning practical, practical clinical usability, so there are moving artifacts. My conclusions. 3D images from CT or MRI replace at, last, at least part of the diagnostic angiographies, not only at the beginning of an interventional procedure. Preparation for an intervention by post-processing a 3D data set implies a chance to get better spatial imagination and altogether better prearrangement of treatment for intervention as well as for surgery. 3D images help upper orientation and angulation during intervention on a fluoroscopy screen, saving radiation and contrast agent. Performing interactive post-processing and CT image fusion is impossible without deep knowledge of congenital heart disease. And image fusion is a field of rapid development and future perspectives, and cardiologists should retain control of the whole process and teach their fellows. I now close a talk with the last fusion image, those of hydrogen to helium, and thank you all for your kind interest.